Lilith and Libra. Well, I'm going to do two videos, okay? Two short videos because there's two separate angles I want to come at this from which is very Libra and frankly, that to want to come up from two sides. So I want to talk about Lilith and Libra generally in this one. And then in the next video, I'll talk about the transit of Lilith through Libra, which is from the 29th of June this year, 2024, into March next year. Okay, so first of all, Lilith and Libra in kind of general terms. Um, what's Lilith? Well, Lilith is the... Um, dark moon, the black moon Lilith, which is a mathematical point. It's not an actual asteroid. Okay, we don't deal with that. It's a mathematical point. And Lilith and Lib Lilith, according to my researches, is something outré, the wild, the dark, the savage, the inner, um, uh, not the inner beast exactly, but our, our wildness, our untamedness. And maybe untamed is the best word to think of for Lilith. And what's really interesting about this particular placement, and would, I love it, okay, <laughs> is because we have the untamed, the wild, in the most civilized sign. Libra is the sign of being civilized. It's the sign of politesse. It's the sign of manners and politics and justice and having a, a debate and discourse and coming to a co compromises and relationships and marriage and the civilized things in life. Also, you know, it's a sign ruled by Venus. It's about art. It's about, um, you know, if you want to do a very Libran thing, it would be go to an art gallery and then have a cup of tea with your friend. You know, that's a Libra, Libra's perfect day, right? So what happens when Lilith, which is like all wild hair and, and uh, you know, running around naked and crazy stuff, what happens when Lilith comes into Libra? It's like, boom, you know, a very interesting conjunction. So <clears throat> one of the things I'd love to do with these when I'm thinking about what astrology actually means, because of course not that much research has been done on Lilith, a lot of things are said, but research, we love that, is to look at what writers there are who actually have Lilith and Libra and whether that has expressed themselves through their writing. And you can do the same with like music as well, but writings because we're, we're dealing in words, right? So here's a quote from Charles Baudelaire. And of course, Charles Baudelaire wrote The Flowers of Evil, Les Fleurs du Mal. Um, the beautiful is always bizarre. And that's already, we're getting into this idea of Lilith and Libra. That's so interesting, the beautiful. Because of course, Libra is also about what is beautiful. And when you have Lilith there, well, your idea of what is beautiful may not be the same as everyone else's. Um, here's a quote from J.R.R. Tolkien, who also had Lilith and Libra. And I'd just like to point out that Tolkien had a very long and happy marriage so never let anyone tell you if you have Lilith and Libra that your marriage is doomed or that you're doomed to have bad relationships. He loved his wife. She loved him. They met, I think they met at school. I might be making that bit up, but they met when they were young, when they were children, and they were happily married their whole lives. And they had a very, you know, good family life as well, um, which is probably one of the things that gave him the, the space and the, uh, to imagine. And here's a little quote from The Two Towers. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. And here's a here's something from the American poet John Ashbery, who I love. Most reckless things are beautiful in some way, and recklessness is what makes experimental art beautiful, just as religions are beautiful because of the strong possibilities that they are founded on nothing. And there's something in Lilith that is also definitely reckless. This is a, 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 a point that's about our recklessness, where we're reckless. 
right? So you may have, if you have Lilith in Libra, you may be someone who recklessly falls in love. Um, but it's also, there's something in Lilith that's about the void, okay, about zero. And I love this from Gunter Grass, which is, this is from his novel, the German novelist, from his novel, Rat. Because men are killing the forests, the fairy tales are running away. And there's also an element of fairy tale to Lilith. This is not about the rational understanding of the world, but about the irrational understanding of the world, which is something that is so suppressed in our current culture that you're not allowed to exercise your Lilith because you have to have reasons for things. And actually, maybe the reason for something is just, well, I felt like it. Um, uh, so just a, another one that I, you know, another person who I think really does exemplify Lilith and Libra and how it can go really wrong, but also really right, is the um, um, novelist Malcolm Lowry, who wrote Under the Volcano and was famously terribly, terribly alcoholic. Um, Good God, if our civilization were to sober up for a couple of days, it'd die of remorse on the third. Okay. Um, so there's something in here about excess and about challenging the rules, about challenging the rules of civilization um, that Lilith in Libra brings out. Um, and it is like a remarkable placement. I think Malcolm, um, Nelson Mandela has it, for instance. We'll get to that in a minute. So we have the sign of marriage, beauty, balance, justice. Um, and these may become extreme somehow when you have a Lilith and Libra. Um, and it's also interesting, back to Tolkien, his great book is The Lord of the Rings, which is a story about, well, it's a lot, a lot of things. It's a story about a journey, really. It's about a, uh, a trip, but it's about power um, and the lust for power and how power warps people. It's a political, it's a very political book. If you read it again. And I prefer the book to the films, by the way. I'm not a fan of the films at all. I think they completely misunderstand the, the book. Um, so Libra's an air sign. It's about the human interactions. You know, the air signs are all about the human to human interactions. And these ones are the one to one um, interactions with Libra, me and you. But they are also about my party versus your party. And that's what makes Libra such a very political sign. Um, you'll find it in this side, you know, the strong Libra in pol the signs of politicians. Also strong, you know, you get Mars and Libra in the signs of, of um, in the charts of lawyers also, for example. Um, so you sometimes Lilith and Libra can show um, that we learn about wilderness through partnership. We learn about our wildness through the person that we are attracted to, right? So you may find that you're attracted to people if you have Lilith and Libra who are crazy, who are different, who are outside and outside the tribe is quite a big one. I've seen that quite a lot. You have Lilith and Libra or Lilith and Seventh sometimes and that and you marry outside the tribe. And that may not be someone who's completely wild, but just someone who your family would not consider the right person. Um, and also, if you do find yourself in a relationship with a Lilith type person, this is a wild woman or a wild man, Pan, or um, someone who's pan like someone who shows you new things that you probably will be expand, you know, it will expand your horizons and it will help you to explore your own wild nature if you have that. Um, so there were some examples. And I just want to just point out there is the, a whole unhinged aspect of Lilith, which is that Lilith is not always positive, okay? Just, you know, that there's a dangerous side to Lilith. And Lilith in Libra in particular can be mentally disordered, okay? So you may find yourself with Lilith and Libra attracted to people who are, they're not rational and you can't deal with them in a rational way, which of course is the other thing about Libra that's so interesting. This is a very rational sign. Libra likes to sort of explain things and talk stuff through and come to a conclusion, you know, and uh, Libra likes to likes 
philosophy, you know, um, it's not the philosophical sign, but it's definitely a one of the, it's the political sign. Okay, okay, here's, here's an example of someone who's got Lilith and Libra and has wild and crazy relationships is Elon Musk, who may also be wild and crazy in other ways too. But if you look at his relationship history, it is, it's extreme. I can't remember how many children he has um, or how many um, relationships he's had, but they're not, they're, it's like unfettered. And that's another thing to think of with Lilith. What is Lilith? She's kind of unfettered, you know? And if you're, I would recommend reading Baudelaire if you really want to understand Lilith and Libra. And also, you know, I was just thinking about Grimes, who Elon Musk was uh, his part, his sometime partner. Did they marry? I can't remember. Uh, she's got Lilith on her midheaven. He like literally married Lilith. You know, he 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 was with the Lilith. Well, one day way of dealing with Lilith in your own, you know, if you have Lilith and Libra is to have various people that you do Lilith with. So, you know, that might be the person that you go for wilderness walks with, or you go and do something else wild with in a sort of controlled way. Um, or to have crazy ideas. Now, uh, that you have, uh, you exchange crazy ideas with. One of my favorite examples um, of Lilith in Libra is Kim Kardashian. Now, Kim Kardashian, I'm sure you know who Kim Kardashian is, but she incre was an incredibly successful Instagram entrepreneur. She became a kind of billionaire, and it was all about her, her be the basis for that was her physical beauty, the way she looked, right? And also the fact that she was willing to have plastic surgery and do stuff to herself and transform the way she looked okay um so she's she was an incredible social media entrepreneur right um so she made a lot of money selling beauty okay so beauty is another aspect of this libra you know the venus ruled libra and she made great wealth out of that um lilith is between her son and Pluto, which are in conjunction anyway, right? So Pluto is great wealth. And she's just, it's like outrageously great wealth that she makes out of this Libran stuff, which is selling beauty, selling stuff. Uh, she married Kanye West, of course, and then unmarried him, who is, was, is, you know, I, I, far be it for me to say he's crazy. He's crazy, right? He's, she married someone who was completely, and that's also very kind of, she's got the Lilith and Libra. She's attracted to the people who are wild, who are different, who are thinking different stuff. It's, and he's always, you know, he's got a mind on the edge of time, doesn't he, Kanye West? Um, and she also went to very extreme lengths, right, to conform and create a beauty standard. So I can't remember what she's done with her body recently, but, you know, she she definitely had bits put on and bits cut off and you know and it's all about remolding the face even with the makeup very interesting person actually and libra is also one of the fashion signs right so that's you know when you have lilith and libra you might have very outrageous fashion sense and that's fun and it's another thing that um, kim kardashian does she's got an outrageous fashion sense and also Kanye West. Well, so when Sun Libra may always look elegant, Lilith and Libra might look like the queen of the night, okay? Um, the, so Coco Chanel, who invented the little black dress, Lilith and Libra, right? What is the little, you know, the little black dress was, was the maid's uniform and she turned it into this great, you know, she, Coco Chanel, I mean, she did it in the 1920s, I think, and actually it was incredibly liberating for women to say, well, I just have the one black dress and I put the big pearls on with it, okay? But the other thing that's very Lilith and Libra is her, about Coco Chanel in particular, was that she collaborated, that's a Libran word, with the Nazis during the Second World War. She was a collaborator. So there's no surprise she worked with the occupiers. She was willing to compromise. So Libra is a sign that's about beauty, but also about harmony. And it's symbolized by the scales. Um, so they may be, you know, you, the scales are one of the most commonly seen astrological signs. You see them all over the place, scales of justice, scales of commerce. And a lot of Librans, this is Lilith and Libra people that I've met personally, have been very 
interested in rebalancing the scales of justice. They've been social uh, justice warriors, in fact, um, or even li literally they have been lawyers um, who've been fighting for social justice because Lilith and Libra sees injustice and wants to can, can see injustice. So we've got the collaborator on one hand and then we have the person who sees injustice on the other and wants to f fix it. Back to Nelson Mandela, he's got Lilith in Libra, makes a conjunction with his Mars, right? So he's got this powerful placement of Mars, which is actually in its fall. Although I think if you've read my website, you know that, that there are a lot of people with Mars and Libra who are warriors for justice. But here's Lilith and Libra it takes that the extra, it took that at the extra mile. So he had to spend 27 years in prison. And he was, you know, he, don't forget, he was also tried. His, his, his trial was for armed struggle. You know, he was willing to take up arms for this struggle. And then he was put behind bars and had a long time to think about everything comes out as this magical symbol of resistance and um, what's the word of resistance and integrity. And I think that's a, an interesting idea to think about with, I mean, there's lots of other aspects of his chart that, that bring the integrity out. Um, but the Lilith and Libra bit of it, I think is this warrior side of him, this that he was willing to carry on the fight. He was not cowed, let's put it like that. Now, um, now Lilith is, I mean, Libra is Venus ruled. Um, so you might take out your anger on women, okay? If you might do that, so it's worth thinking about, or you may be angry on behalf of women. And guess who had Lilith and Libra? Well, I'll tell you who had Lilith and Libra is Mary Wollstonecraft, the author of The Vindication of the Rights of Women. Now, why is this so Lilith and Libra? It's like, because it's about rights. It's about justice. She's not just saying, um, it's unfair, women are treated badly. She's saying they have rights and she's doing it in a very kind of lawyerly way with um, that piece of writing. Um, and of course, um, her Lilith and Libra is on the bendings, by the way, of her chart. And what are the bendings? That's the point halfway between, um, it's at a 90 degree angle to her nodes. Um, and it's also interesting to me, and this is something I wanna mention, just, in passing about Lilith, that it is Lilith, this point is definitely to do with childbirth and the loss of children. Um, and of course, famously, Mary Wollstonecraft died in childbirth. So she came to an end as it's a kind of Lilith style end. And um, if you see, you know, um, Lilith in Libra in what well, Lilith anywhere in a person's chart can tell you something about um, their relationship to giving birth. So sometimes you see Lilith um, can mean someone has a lot of children actually, or almost too many children. They're very, very fertile. And sometimes it means they have no children, depending on where it falls in the chart. Um, so it's a very, it's, it's significant Lilith. So another well-known, so there is a feminist element to Lilith and Libra because of the warriors for justice, the idea of fighting for justice with that Lilith. And the other person who I think is really interesting is Giselle Halimi, who was who founded Choisir, which was the uh, French feminist uh, movement that... Um, that made abort that forced the French government to make abor abortion legal in France, and one of the ways that they did that um, was with the Manifesto of 343 Sluts, where all of these really famous French women said, "Yeah, I had an abortion. Yeah, I had an abortion." They all signed it. Um, what are you going to do about it, government? Are you going to, you know, are you going to arrest us all? But no, they didn't. They had to legalize, legalize it and said um, it was, you know, that was written by Simone de Beauvoir. Um, I noticed that Roxane Gay, bad feminist author, she's got an interesting card, but she actually has, she has a lot of planets in Libra, but her Lilith is actually in Aquarius, which is another place 
um, that you do see, again, it's an air sign and you see that fighting for justice um, also with Lilith and Aquarius. There's a lot of feminists have Lilith and Aquarius too. Um, so in sum, Lilith and Libra is, you may be willing to go the extra mile for justice, for fashion, for beauty, um, for all of those Libran things and for a relationship, for a person. Um, see you in the next video.